Alright, what's going guys? Yes, from the project back at it again in here for the video for you guys for today. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about Elimination Chamber 2020. And it's pretty weird that in March we had Elimination Chamber. I'm so used to it being in February, but of course we had Super Showdown and everything. So now we're basically kicking it into high gear, full speed ahead into WrestleMania. And it's going to be pretty interesting. So, as always, I do have the tablet with me and everything I'm going to be talking about what I thought about the matches and about the show overall and as well be sure to leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment box and we'll talk about that well after this video is up so I'm gonna get right down into it we had the kickoff match we had the Viking Raiders taking on the major brothers in this one and it made sense for the Viking Raiders to actually get the win so I can kind of see them really being in a multi-man tag team match for the World Tag Team Championships at Wrestlemania that could happen, never really know, but at least they're actually being able to face other tag teams besides local talent, so that's fine. Uh, the first match, which actually surprised me, and quite a bit of these matches ended up doing that anyway, I wasn't really looking forward into Elimination Chamber going in, but going out was a different story, but we had Daniel Bryan and Andrew Gulak on this one. And I like what they're doing with Daniel Bryan. He's able to face people that we don't normally see now. And that's cool and everything. And also what we did get to see, Daniel Bryan and obviously Drew Gulak going at it. And Drew Gulak being more serious. I like this side of him basically working on the neck a lot of Daniel Bryan, which is crazy. And overall, Daniel Bryan was able to come back somehow, some way. So I'm not too sure what he's going to be doing. I heard he might face Sheamus. Who knows? We'll see. But I would, would basically wouldn't mind seeing Daniel Bryan and Drew Gulak like, as a few, and to see where things go there, because that was pretty damn interesting and a fun match there. And then we had the United States Championship match. We had Andrade, St. Almas, and Alberto Carrillo, and. Before with Super Showdown, Alberto Carrillo was able to face Angel Gloves. I didn't really talk about that fully in the video, but in the comments. But that, of course, with their feud, that's been really awesome. Love the chemistry. Same thing here as well between two. So, you know, I'm kind of thinking maybe like a Fatal 4 way coming at WrestleMania for the US title. That would be pretty cool. Getting Rey Mysterio into the mix with an, uh, Angel Garza, Andrade, and as well Alberto Carrillo. So, We'll see where that goes, but for the U.S. title, really cool back and forth stuff. Could have meant either or, but Andrade was able to win and retain over Alberto Carrillo there. Then where we had the World Tag Team titles, the Street Profits and Seth Rollins and Buddy and Murphy on this one. The Street Profits recently winning them on Raw, the tag titles and everything, so Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy were looking to get him back. We had the Authors of Pain here. And then eventually the Viking Raiders came out, so those two teams being able to go at it in the face-off and a little brawl. And then after a while we had Kevin Owens coming out, looking to face Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. So that should be pretty damn fun to see that match happen. So there's that altercation, and in the end Street Profits were able to retain, keep the World Tag Team titles, and basically call it a day. So that's cool, can't go wrong with that. Then where we had Aleister Black and AJ Styles in the no disqualification match where we had the OC there of course getting involved a little bit uh, we see basically AJ Styles just working the legs of Aleister Black which is pretty wise there we saw the Singapore cane and this one the steel chair on uh, a table spot which was pretty insane and then the Undertaker showing up that was cool and basically evening things up and everything taking out the OC and getting ready for Undertaker and AJ Styles and Aleister Black actually gets a win so that's pretty damn awesome there and one of his big wins so we'll see if this feud will actually continue after AJ Styles and The Undertaker that would be interesting to see where that goes and then we get into the handicap match for the Intercontinental Championship of course Braun Strowman taking on Cesaro, Sami Zayn and Shinsuke Nakamura and I would have been surprised if Braun Strowman was able to get the win. You would think so. Obviously not. Sammy's team, you know, really was working on Braun Strowman a lot. And Sami Zayn actually gets the Intercontinental Championship. I'm not really mad at that either. Even though, yeah, Braun Strowman should have been able to retain and keep the championship. So, 
probably have Braun Strowman and Sami Zayn for WrestleMania for the title. So we'll see where that goes, and hopefully we we'll get to see Sami Zayn actually wrestle more often since he's been more of the manager role for Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro, even though they both don't really need it. But we'll see where that goes. And then we get into the SmackDown Tag Team Elimination Chamber match for that side, where we had the Usos, New Day, Heavy Machinery, Lucha House Party, Dolph Ziggler, Robert Roode, and of course The Miz and John Morrison. This one surprised me with the crazy spots that we did see, especially from Lindsay Dorado hanging from the top of the Elimination Chamber, which is crazy and everything, and especially with Otis and going right through the pod. That was insane and eventually actually being eliminated. So hopefully Otis will somehow get Mandy Rose back or at least get some payback after what Dolph Ziggler did. Trying to get with Mandy Rose and everything. So we'll see where that goes. I can kind of see a tag team match at WrestleMania between Heavy Machinery and Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler. But we'll see. But in this one, in the end, we did have Miz and Morrison retaining and keeping the titles, which is fine with the title defense since they recently won the titles and everything. So, not too sure where things are going to go for them at WrestleMania, but we'll see what happens with that. And then we get into the women's side of things for the Elimination Chamber, where we had Ruby Riot, Liv Morgan, uh, Sarah Logan, Asuka, Natalia, and Shayna Baszler so to see who will face Becky Lynch as well for the Raw Women's Championship. And this one, I didn't really care for this one too much. I was having somewhat hopes for it, but not too high as this one. I was hoping, you know, with Shayna Baszler being able to have it be a little bit too predictable, eliminating people a little bit too quickly. I mean, there were some moments with Natalia and stuff like that, but I feel like for the others, like Liv Morgan, Ruby Riot, and the rest of the Riot Squad as well, basically didn't have too much of a chance, but, you know, they had their little moments and stuff like that. Then it came down to Shayna Baszler and Asuka in this one, and Asuka actually pulling on a fight, so can't go wrong with that too much but you know just wish there was more out of it than besides like the quick eliminations that I felt like and Shayna Baszler just mocking everyone and stuff like that so I wish it was more like a tag team match and everything but it is what it is and Shayna Baszler of course obviously being able to win and face Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's Championship at Wrestlemania and that's basically it for Elimination Chamber in a nutshell. And honestly, you know, besides that, I wish the women's match could have been done a lot more differently. But everything else, you know, I did enjoy and I was surprised about and how it turned out for everything else. If I missed anything else, I'll leave it in the comments or whenever have you. And as always, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for all my videos. And we'll talk about Elimination Chamber well after this video is up so there's the only thing basically left for Wrestlemania I'm looking to do of course a party with that so I know but the Chris is looking to come down and everything so that should be fun of course I think we're going to be watching NXT TakeOver Tampa I'm not really too sure on that so be on the lookout for a review on that and of course for Wrestlemania and uh, be sure to look out for on his side, some pretty cool stuff. Maybe we'll do a live reaction again for both shows. Who knows? That remains to be seen. So that should be definitely something to look forward to. Until then, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Whatever the hell that next video may be. Until then, I'll catch you then. See ya and peace. <laughs>
go chill. You never know when, you never know where. But chances are I run it in there. Sometimes weird, you shit in my tracks for a couple of years. Now you love it when you suck as a peer. Think I got a motherfucking idea? Oh yeah, and I got another one here. Ain't for effort, but you never compare. I just got this devilish stance. What my reflection said in the mirror. But after this, but the all be.